Over the years, I have built medical buildings, townhomes, condos, multifamily of all sorts, big customs, little ADUs. I've never built a dispensary. That is until now. This building's about 100 years old. I don't know the exact date, but it's old. It looks old. The bottom of this place was structurally retrofitted not too long ago. So they've got updated Simpson strong type brackets, big post and beam that actually sit in buckets. It's getting there. The floor is surprisingly level too. But inside, we've just got this massive open floor plan. We're currently splitting the rooms up. We've got the back room built already with two by six. You guys saw that in the last video. In the front, we've got the entryway, a couple doors in there. We'll talk about the timely doors that we're putting in, along with the framing that we've got going. Steven and Larry are in there right now, and they currently hate me because we have to chip out the tile without damaging the tile next to it. So the wall sits in there. Little bit of a pain. Hope you guys are ready. Fun little video here. Check it out, see what we got going. Before we get into this, I love that. I think it looks kind of cool. I don't know about you guys. I wouldn't do it like that though. I would do like the whole corner of a building with brick exposed from there up. This kind of looks like a cow. I don't know, I think it looks all right. But this is the building we got going on right now. That is the neighboring residence. So they are joined with a brick wall. Exterior finish looks cool. We've got all this taken care of. These three by blocks per structural engineer. That'll be our tie for the four by eight sheets. We're using five eight sheeting on everything with a three or a four and 12 nail pattern. Still need to look at that. But this is all built out here. It's looking pretty good. When we went to snap everything out, this wall is long enough that we just paralleled over from here to here. But this back wall here, I pulled off of here, pulled off of there, and then checked it for parallel from here and there and this was out a good inch plus it's because this back wall here is not good yeah showing it's good there there we go so this wall here kicks in really hard we had to adjust for that so we took eight foot out of the corner this way eight foot out of the corner this way and then on our construction calculator calc the eight foot rise eight foot run and hit diagonal and then taped it from there to there now we know that that's a perfect 90. we're gonna put a header all the way across here continue down the four buys all the way through resheat this what do you say why What happened to the grinder? Where's the little buzz that we were using yesterday? The uh, rotor hammer. You were doing it. Doing what? The rotor hammer with the flat bit. Oh. Okay, so the rubber hammer, like. The rubber hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Why is your thumb covered in blue painter's tape? Because it kept missing the chisel and hit my thumb on the, on the hammer, so. We've got this little platform currently built, attached here, attached there. This chase is coming out. This had the old HVAC in it. All that's going away though. This is coming out. Ceiling will continue all the way through. So I've got to cut back these little joists here and stab these out all the way over up against this little brick wall here. I'm gonna put a ledger all the way across, run the joist into them that way, and then build a wall up underneath it. Give it a little gap off of this brick wall. We still need to figure out what's behind that sheet. That's intriguing. Yeah, that thing should do the trick. That'll put a hole in the floor. That's what we're going for, right? That's exactly what we're going for. The problem that we have, we got this hardy backer down here. We're not too worried about putting plate on top of that, but all of the grout that they've got from the tile needs to come up. We can't put plate on top of that or it'll feel wavy davy. That thing will shoot straight through the floor, so. That's the most important tool right there. The broom? Yeah. Absolutely. I mastered the broom. We're looking pretty good. I cut this hopefully around five and three quarter. Nah, eh, it's six. Gives me plenty of room for my five and a half inch plate. So we've got a door opening from there to there. My door opening is 40 and a half for my RO. So the tile can stay. The timely doors will go in. The tile will fall all the way through and look like this place was built this way. That's gonna be nice. I'll have to break out this last little chunk here, Larry. Gotta get that little chunk out. We start plating, put these walls up. Oh, we gotta take those things off again, T. The little uppers, I think they're curtains. I couldn't tell you what these are. Larry, do you know what these are? 
Is it a curtain rod? I don't know. So just like how this back section's built, normally when we'd frame, we'd run the place all the way through and then I'd cut out the door frame once we were done. Since we're leaving the tile though, I needed a 40 and a half inch opening. That's my RO. So I just went ahead, stopped the plate, stopped the plate, nailed them down with a 40 and a half and then ran it all the way through. So that's what we'll do over here as well. We're just gonna cut plates for in between the tile sections that are cut out. Make sure they're spot on for the ROs on the door here and then here. And then we need to shoot laser lines here and there. What sucks is if this thing is out at all, we kind of have to match it. I can fudge it a little bit, but that drywall is going to be continuous all the way through. So if this thing's leaned out one way or another, kind of have to go with it. We can stretch it a bit, but not too much. Good there. Larry, kick this little end out over here. Perfect. Let's pop it there. Steven, it's that uh, 5 16th hex bit, the little one that's just smaller than the SDS bit. And there's just a couple of them, Larry, and we really only need to take off, since we're not really doing all of the demo here, I would like to just take off this little section because I'm not sure if they're reusing them or what they're doing. So if we can just take off that little six footer, allows us to get our walls in here. I'll start laying out right now. This will cut back to here. That takes care of that. And we'll put a four foot piece that goes over there to there for the next top plate. And we're good to go. Yeah, we need one that goes from there all the way clear over. I'll start laying out these. We need to cut headers for these. So 40 and a half is our opening plus trimmer, trimmer on both sides. Uh, 43 and a half, we cut like, it's four of them to box it. Cut eight of them, 43 and a half. We'll box out just the same way that we did the header down on the far end over there. We'll just box two of them out. So I never build headers like this. This is like a Denver, Colorado thing. Something Jared would do. It's not insulated, which I'm pretty sure I'll get kicked back on, but I don't really care because it's an interior header. I'm not really worried about, yeah, no, not worried at all. But I didn't have a header. This is more than enough. None of this is load bearing. It's all just, I mean, it spanned from here all the way over to there for a hundred years. We're perfectly fine. So it's two by six, all four sides works out. That would put it closer to the edge. I'm cool with that. So our trimmer is gonna land here. Trimmer will land here. And then inch and a half back from there, we'll have our king stud. Uh, that's 43 and a half. That looks good. Half inch header there, we'll get that cut in just a bit. Since 16 lands for our first stud, right where that king is, we don't have to have any studs there. We'll skip over to here, 16 on center. All of our channels, any of the ends. That's my thing, man. I can't even see these anymore. I think it's time for a new square. We'll mark out the five and a half. And then just put a big X. We know that we need a cali here. It'll go from here over to there. That will act as our end stud, and then this will catch our drywall backing. So we'll be inch and a half out here, and it'll finish out about there. Then the same thing here. We came off the wall, I believe it was 32 inches. Yep, to our RO. RO is 40 and a half. These plates are perfectly spaced. That means all we gotta do is pull inch and a half, three inches. First one's for our trimmer. Right our header on here, 43 and a half. Same thing out here. We've got an inch and a half, we've got three inches. It's gonna be nice, we don't have to cut our plates. And then same thing, we're gonna pull layout, figure out which way it works. With layout, this is actually gonna be a little bit different, check this out. Instead of pulling off of the start of our wall here and going that way, you have to think about shear panel going all the way to the outside corner. So we're actually gonna hook that and then pull 16 centers all the way through. You can see where this lands down here. So we'll hook there, 16 centers all the way through. So 
So I'm gonna shift gears from taking care of this stuff. We'll frame this up tomorrow. Once these walls are up, we'll be looking pretty good. But I gotta move all the scaffold over here. And right now, all my scaffold is over here by T. We need to, you can see all the four bys that got cut by the demo team. They really shouldn't have been cut. So I'm gonna cut them back to where they're all perfectly level across there. Throw a four by 12 across there and then continue the four bys back down. Probably have to strap from the top down to complete that connection. And reframe the timely door here. Put this back in. You wanna do this or you wanna do sheer? What would you prefer doing? Do we want to blow and go on shear and then close the day out with cutting this and trimming it down? None of the cuts are straight. We have to cut through the drywall and the shear panel. It's not like we can just blow and go with that. It's kind of... No, it's not going to be quick by any means. All right, you want to start slapping eight foot sheets then? Let's bust the bands on those and get that going then. I marked all of them out. So all of your black lines represent where you're going to stop, where you're going to start. We want to keep ourselves a quarter inch off. T went ahead and installed this block line up here. You're what? It was like eight foot one block line? Yes. So our sheets will break perfectly. This is eight foot from here down. We're using five eight sheets and then up top we'll do eight foot sideways. So we'll start on the corner here, run to this one here, perfect split. And we'll keep it going. Larry, I think we're gonna switch gears. I think we're gonna do the shear panel on all the inside walls right there. It'll be some eye candy, it'll look good. Yeah, we could just bring them in one at a time and throw them up, tack them for right now, and then we'll go through and nail them afterwards. So for security purposes, there's gonna be no access aside from this locked door here. We have on the back side of this 5 8 shear panel that we're about to put up, half inch drywall on the outside of that. And then on the inside here, we've got a like corrugated metal that's gonna go through here. Not corrugated, that's not the right word. Like the expanded metal, like a barbecue pit. That'll go all the way through through here, 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 and then drywall covers over the top of that. So if anybody does try to break through, good luck. It ain't gonna happen. So we've got 5H sheathing here. We gotta do the 5H sheathing here. This one is cut up a little bit differently. We'll explain that in just a bit. This up here works out to just over four foot. So we're gonna run sheets sideways, catch eight feet, and run all the way down. Should be able to do that whole upper in one sheet, two sheet, and a little piece over there. We'll go good. end up with a tiny little piece in the case that it's actually for a sheer value. If we pulled over this way, 96 put us right over here. That would have been two full sheets. But I don't really want just a tiny little less than 12 inch piece here. So what we're gonna do is cut this back to 32, which we've already done. And now this last piece is just about 27 and a half. Well, on a roof system out here in California, it's different everywhere. From the ridge down to whatever the next sheet is, we can't have anything smaller than 24. So if we sheet all the way up to the top and we have an 18 inch piece, we have to cut that last sheet back to 24. So we've got a full two foot piece. Kind of the same thing we apply to sheer panel and anything else. Keep it going. It needs to go another foot or so, all the way to the back tee. Yep. We gotta beat that top over just a little bit before you nail into that stud. See how it's not bearing fully on that? I mean, it's actually overbearing on this last stud tee. It's split perfect down at the bottom, the top. Oh, no, I can't see that from here. Oh. Yeah. You don't have bendable eyes? So I bought this thing. They've got a Diablo flush trim router bit on here with the bearing. I don't like the ones with the bearing. Um, that's just the only thing they had in the big box stores. But I bought this little thing because I saw a good friend of mine, Tim, using it. And he actually liked it. He has the big DeWalt Flexbolt batteries. He does have the little handle, huh? That he mounted onto there. I'll probably try to make something work. I don't know. But we're going to give it a shot over here on this door and see how it works out. Hopefully it works. If not, I'm going to be kind of bummed out. I've tried so many different routers that are cordless and never been happy. You think it's going to work? That thing? Yeah. Yeah. Looks like they cut it with a beaver. This one's backwards and broken. They just took a sawzall to it and went nuts. So we have to go off the highest point, which is here. I think we kind of have to match that all the way through. So whatever that is, two and a half. We'll snap it across here then and I'll cut it with Bigfoot. 10 and a quarter, we'll get through it. Give it a pop. 
top there. That's where we'll cut it all the way. We're gonna put a four by 12 in here from here down to here and then continue the four by as if they were never cut all the way back out to there. Should be able to wrap it up by the end of the day. It'll look good. I can get inch and a half in here, it looks like. So I'm just gonna run the saw this way. Should be able to cut through it. I don't know, it'll be interesting. back to I think what we're gonna do we'll cut them all here snap a line and just cut the sheathing all the way across the same elevation probably have to put pad blocks or something up in here on top of the header so we can get nailing into it Or the 107 and 7 8. 107 and 7. Let's find the crown in that bad boy, Larry. We'll cut it at 107. I'd like to put up T if we could put up some little blocks or something underneath it so that it'll hold itself up. 107 and 7. Hopefully these are cut clean enough. Looks like they should work. We were just talking about leaving this plywood here where we don't have to do the blocks up top. If I cut it back to here, I have to make some sort of connection structurally from this existing sheathing down to the header. If I leave this, I can clean up the cut once the header's in and then that'll nail into the top. That's my connection. Won't have to deal with blocks in between everything. This thing's in here now. We've got it tacked up over here. You can see that the sheathing here does hang down onto the beam. We decided to leave it rather than cutting it out. I am hoping that I can clean up that cut a little bit and get my nailing all the way along the top. And then I'll sheet from here down. LTP four plate to plate connector there and be good to go. Four by here, four by here, all the way through. A little timely door here. That looks so much better. So now we'll get a trimmer on this side, a trimmer on this side, timely door frame in here, four by four continuation all the way out. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to continue this blocking out for the panels. Likely I'm gonna have to strap from the top down. This wasn't supposed to get cut out, but the demo team took it out. I don't know why, maybe to have bigger access here, but whatever it was, it wasn't supposed to go. When you see a wall that's constructed like this with four bys, four by panel edging and two and 12 nailing, you think, let's cut it out. No, no, let's leave it. Right now it's really hard to get material drops um, scheduled out. It's like anywhere from a week or so. The lumber yard's down to a single driver. So getting anything out here has been a pain. With that said, we brought the flatbed trailer today and a ton of sheets out here. Therefore, the enclosed trailer with the laser level is at storage. We don't have it. And that's what I need in order to shoot the four buys continued all the way down. So we're gonna go ahead and leave this for now. It's just about time to roll it up anyways. We're going to try out this DeWalt router over here on this door, see how it works out. T, do you wanna do the honors? No? I'll do it. I hope it works. If not, this is just gonna be another trim router that I add to the collection. Let's give it a shot. It doesn't sound very powerful. That did a lot better than I was expecting. And this is with a little XR battery. I'm sure if I used a big one, it would probably work a lot better. Are you impressed? Yeah. I'm impressed. My, nice wall. My thought was, is that all the way up? Yeah, it's turned all the way up. Oh, okay. Seven, seven is the cap. It doesn't sound like it's very powerful. I don't really know what I want it to sound like. A little race car? 
I don't know. I'm impressed. I gotta finish this test. This is 5 8 OSB. It is 5 8 Half inch would be a little bit easier.